Stephen Cervantes, we are back again. Yes, we are. I was just telling Jonathan between the recordings, like, I'm hanging around a lot of older guys these days. And it's like, because I think I'm an older guy now. <laughs> and it's like, I feel bad because I wish I had young guy stories, you know. But I'm about to tell another older guy story. But I think the Bible says the older is supposed to teach the oh, yeah. younger. You it's know? meant to be a generational passing on yeah. of, of And I think wisdom. the wisdom yeah. that occurs later is different than the wisdom that happens at 20. Right, right, yeah. Because I thought I was pretty wise at 20. Well, it's funny. I remember and, hearing Tim Keller one time. He was preaching, and he says, you know, when you're, uh, when you're 40, you look back on when you were 20 and realize how foolish you were then. And then he said, when you're 60, you look back on when you were 40 and realize how foolish you are then. So he said, all of life is this realization that you didn't have it together back then, you know, so. Okay. So a gentleman and I had uh, a lunch meeting and I said, can I share some of your thoughts? He says, man, I, I always use my number. I said, you know, is it okay if we bless a thousand guys with this? Yeah. And he goes, absolutely. You know, every man that loves God says use the material mm, that's right because I, I, i'm going to be a little personal here my father didn't tell me stories and yeah. talk to me very much he was a private man that kept to himself and it's like i needed an older man to guide me and teach me and it's like part of why i do what i do is because i think the younger guys need the stories from the older guys Absolutely. so they can learn the lessons quicker and not mm -hmm. fall in the same holes we fell in yeah so he and I are talking, and he launches into this little monologue, if you will. He said, it's time for me to learn some new things about my own heart. So then I pulled up, and he said, my heart hungers for God. And he said, that same heart takes me to bad places. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh. Man, yeah. isn't that so true? You know, a part of us loves God, but the other part loves pleasure and immediate and distraction, entertainment. And then he said, what I thought was hokey, he said, I have a new skill. So I'm sitting, ready, listening, and he says, I'm asking myself a new question. And I thought, oh, this is going to be good. This is an older wise guy. This is going to be good. And then he says, what would Jesus do? I thought, wasn't that a movement already? Didn't they have bands and say WW? Yeah, exactly. what? what? This is old news. But he was using it in a new, fresh way. Mm -hmm. And he was spot on. Because he says, if I ask myself that question and then I try to do it, I'm a better man. Yeah. So once I got past the, yeah, that's hokey. <laughs> I thought he's, he is right. What would you, I mean, that's a universal from the beginning from when quite Christ delivered his message. I'm sure the apostles said that to yeah, each other. Yeah. What would, what would Yahweh, what would Jehovah, what, 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 what should we do? What was yeah. the leader? What was Jesus name? Yeshua. Yeshua. That's what I'm trying yeah. to say. What would Yeshua, what would Yeshua do? You know, what would mm. Jesus do? So anyway, so, okay, I back up because it's like profound and deep, even though somebody marketed it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm entering this new phase of life. Um, he said, it's in the spirit, me crying out more and more with my spirit. And then he said this. My spirit is ready to embrace humility. This is a very accomplished man. Mm -hmm. Lots of stuff, job, title. And he said, I'm ready to embrace humility. And then the thought occurred to me, blessed are the meek. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me pause there. What are you thinking so far? Well, several things. That first bit about, you know, learning about his own heart, my heart hungers for God, but also that same heart's taking me down some wrong paths. It made me think of, you know, the Bible talks about how over, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. And then also talks about how we have a, 
we have a tongue that can simultaneously praise God yet curse. Uh, and so there's a sense in which yes. we've got this internal struggle that's always going yes. on, like the same heart that says, I long for God, I praise God, I worship yes. God, is the same heart that can produce foul speech and can take us down dark paths, you know? Yes. And the, the fact that he's realizing, man, there's a battle going on in there. But I love, I love the idea when, you know, I know, you, what would Jesus do? Right? <laughs> but here's the beauty of our relationship with Christ and the fact that we have the Holy Spirit in us, see, mm. is that we don't have to just ask that as just like kind of something that gets tossed out into the air. Yeah. We can actually say personally to the, the living Spirit of Christ in us, yes. Holy Spirit, yeah. what, what would you have me do right now? What would you do in me right now and through me? So we don't have to make it just sort of like almost this philosophical question or like, oh, let me try to just guess. Yeah. Like we have the word of God. We have the spirit of Christ in us. So there's a sense in which we can have a much more personal yeah. answer to that question than just something that's, you know, theological. And then I love the fact that, um, uh, you know, that he is realizing that with all of the accomplishments that he's achieved in his life, that maybe there's nothing more valuable than being humble before God. Amen. You yeah. know, and that's a hard, uh, can we just be honest, especially as men <clears throat> yeah, sometimes in our yeah. culture today, that's a hard lesson to learn because we just, we are almost conditioned to be achievers, mm. right? We want to have you know, accolades, we want to have glory, we want to have, you know, something that we can point to and say, I did that, right? It's and, true. and he's realizing, hey, I may have a lot of stuff that I could point to and say, I did that. But what's most important is I, I've got to lean into humility. I can't make it about me. That is so powerful. Because I actually enjoy humble men. Mm -hmm. I mean, I run around haughty men, huffy men, full of themselves. And he goes on to say, I used to be full of myself, but I'm tired of being stupid. I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of being divided. And then he said, do you remember the woman at the well? Mm. Jesus knew her, and he knew her heart, and he knows my heart, mm. and he is pursuing me the same way he pursued that woman. Yeah. You know what I love about that is because the, the picture I get is is, you know, literally the picture of how Jesus met this woman at the well. What is she doing? She's having to, first of all, the well would have been outside the city. She's having to go out there. She's also going out there when nobody else would know she's there because she's going out in the middle nice. of the day when everybody else would have gone in the, and so the fact that Jesus, and guess what? She's in Samaria. And if you remember the story, all the disciples were like, we don't need to go through there. And Jesus says, oh, we right. must go. Oh. And so he had, he was intentionally <clears throat> going to meet with this woman. And you know what else is cool about that story? And I don't know if this guy knows that, but did you know that she, a Samaritan, sexually addicted woman, you know, you couldn't get more of an outcast than that. She was the first human that he specifically revealed his identity as the Savior. Yes. And so the fact that he says, man, he knew her and he pursued her and he knows me the same way. Like when I'm out trying to hide from everybody else and, and I, you know, I've got my disgrace and I got all the things that I want to hide, don't want anybody to know about. He goes and meets me out. He goes and actually meets me there. He doesn't mm. say, hey, get your act together and come into town and get cleaned up. And, and right. I love that. Like he right. goes and pursues us in that way. He said, I often remind myself of my failings. But Jesus reminds me who I am. Mm, that is so good. Mm. And he said, it's funny, but I have to keep reminding myself that God is not human. <laughs> right? Because humans judge and critique and value and devalue. And that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's not human at all. And even though I want to put my humanity on him, it's not true. He said, I'm entering a new season in my life. And in this new humility 
uh, in this new openness and honesty, I'm finding great refreshment. Mm. And I say that even though my life has been one of struggles and even tremendous difficulty in managing my own sexuality. Yeah. Well, and uh, that idea of, man, that the statement is so profound when he says, I remind myself of my failings, but Jesus reminds Amen. me of my identity. Oh, yes, and, that's good. You know, if I had to, if, if somebody put a gun to my head and said, in one statement, boil down everything that you have to, to deal with in your ministry, like what is the main focus of your ministry? That's it. Identity. My identity in Christ. Like right. when, yes. when that, when you get that right, when you begin to understand that that is what God is after, He's saying you're made in My image. You're mm. uh, you're meant to be a a clean, pure reflection of Me. And the more you understand what that means to be in Christ, to actually be a a son or a daughter of God, you know, it's like man, that changes everything. And I love the fact that as he's entering into this new season in life, that is becoming central to his understanding of how he's to live and, and really understand that. So even when he talks about, listen, God's not a human like me. Of course, in a way we go, well, Christ, you know, God did enter humanity so that he could relate to mm. us in a new way. But obviously the God is spirit, right? Yes. So he, he doesn't, um, he's not constrained Mm. by humanity and so many times you're right we want to wrap god in our humanity right instead of going man he's beyond that and but yet this this whole identity piece i think is so huge and that's what i think we we've got to lean into the most in terms of understanding how we were made to live mm. he goes on he said there is a tension that has lived within me a long time and it's the tension between the old ugly pleasure program and God's beautiful love story mm. he said my spirit knows God's forgiveness but my soul still says I'm unlovable mm. and then he goes on and he says God calls for perfection you know that verse be mm -hmm. perfect right, right yeah and he says why because he is perfection, and he wants nothing less for his sons. Mm -hmm. Perfect love. Perfect forgiveness. Perfect acceptance. Yeah, you know, I love, I love the lens through which he's seeing this, because so many times when we, I mean, I remember I used to read those passages, be holy as I am holy, you know? Mm -hmm. And I would, I would read those through my perspective, Mm. And it would crush me mm. until I finally realized, what does that look like from God's perspective? Mm. And essentially, that's what this guy is getting here. From God's perspective, he's saying, you have no idea of all that I want to bestow upon you. You don't know what perfect joy looks mm. like. You don't know what perfect peace oh, and perfect yes. love. And so what he's saying is the reason I want you to be holy because I'm holy is because I want to give you all of my yes. self. And I'm like, oh, that changes everything when you start seeing it that way. Mm. Rather than if I look at it through my perspective, my perspective, all I'm left with is I can't attain that. I'm crushed. I'm, mm. I'm just destroyed under the burden of that. If For, it's on me. If it's on me. me if somehow I have I've to got to attain it. holiness. Yeah. But when it's from God, who is the Holy One, and mm. he's saying, hey, by the way, Stephen, quit trying to earn that. I'm giving it to you as a gift. I'm giving you the righteousness oh, of Christ. Yes. I'm giving you the holiness. It's all of a sudden you go, oh. That's a whole new way to live. That's a whole new way to enjoy <laughs> uh, life. And he talked about the season of refreshment. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the humility. I mean, think about that. If you sit before the Father, there's only one way to sit. It's in humility. Absolutely. You know, and what will happen? Refreshment of your soul. Mm -hmm. Right. So he said, in the past, I settled. I tried. I did what I could. But today, my spirit wants to do it right. Mm. But my soul is still playing catch up. 
Don't you just love that? Right, yeah. Because our souls are where the old program is and all the bad. But my spirit knows and hungers and it just it wants to camp on right it loves right but the old soul program's got some bad program and he says i'm still i'm not done yet i'm still in this battle here Mm -hmm. but i have clarity i know i'll fall short but now i want to reach higher i want to do better and settling is not an option Mm. he said i'm striving daily but striving means living closer to God. Yeah, I love this. And, and what again, what this gentleman is getting in this new perspective, and here's a guy who's obviously, hey, he's accomplished. He's worked hard. Mm-hmm. He's, he's earned a good living. He's been able to you know, produce, right? Mm-hmm. And yet, what is he learning in this new, this new season? He's realizing, hey, you know what? I, I, I can't produce the things in me that are actually of most value. What he's realizing is this striving, the old me would have said striving is about me just working harder, trying harder. Like he says, hey, I, I, I'll try. I'll just keep, just keep, you know, I'll put in more hours. I'll do more work. Right. And what he's realizing now is, you know what striving looks like is, striving looks like humbly sitting at the feet of God. Oh, and yes. saying, how do I get more of him? How do I just mm. pursue him in a way that his life, the identity that he's given to me as a gift of grace is beginning to flow out and, and manifest. Hmm. So he said, I'm learning to speak with God more and to speak with him better because he's been trying to communicate with me since birth. Hmm. He said, here's my new insight. Joy comes from the pursuit of God. The goal is not attainable. We will spend the rest of our lives in pursuit of God. Yeah, I love this. You know, this this fits a lot with what, uh, you know, you and I have talked about for a couple of decades now is like, what do we say to guys all the time? You got to get on a growth mission. Yeah, that's right. right? Oh, that's growth, cool. growth, growth. And so many times, how hard is it mm. to put the idea of growth or pursuit in the bullseye of the target? Because we're always thinking about, no, I've got to get to a destination. Right. I've got to get to some point that's good. in my life where these things are figured out. And I love what this guy is saying is, you know, the goal isn't perfectly attaining Yes. some kind of status or whatever. No, it's the pursuit of God. Like, And I would even submit, Stephen, that, and this, this may be controversial, but I don't think it's that, I don't think it's wrong, is um, I, I think our pursuit of God is not going to end in heaven. Mm. Think about it this way. Even though we're going to be in glorified bodies, we're going to have a new way of experiencing God and a new type of knowledge of God we could never have exhaustive knowledge of God because then Mm. we would be God. So I think all of eternity Mm. is going to be a continual pursuit of like just the beauty, the wonder, the creativity, the joy, the love of God. Yes. And so wouldn't it be great if we just got in really good practice here and now? (laughs) Like what does it look like for us to pursue? That's good. Because then the transition won't be so stark (laughs) when we go to heaven. He goes on, he says... I'm reminded that God said, where sin abounds, sin abounds, my grace abounds more. Mm -hmm. Don't you just love that? No matter how sinful, he said, I got you covered. I can cover that. No matter how stupid, I can cover that. Yeah. You're mine. Grace abounds. And I can see God clearer, and my spirit is more attuned to God's spirit. And I can feel God. And I'm learning to feel God when he's near to me. Mm, that's good. You know, the, uh, the most worn out pages in my Bible, especially early on in my own personal recovery, was uh, Romans chapter 5 through 8. And that's exactly where that statement mm. comes from, where, where sin abounds, grace abounds more. And uh, because I needed that. I needed mm. to understand that as a foundational element like, okay, um, clearly sin has abounded in my life. Mm. And how much did I need that message that God's grace 
abounds, abounds even mm-hmm. more. Yes. And uh, what's beautiful even about that passage, if you read all all four of those chapters, is you know the argument that the Paul makes is like, does that mean we keep on sinning? Right. He's like, may it never be. You've been crucified with Christ, you know. Yeah. And so I, I just love the fact that he's he's realizing, hey, you know what? I've got a history in my life. I've got an abundance of sin that's been part of that. But I'm learning in this new season that no matter how much the abundance of my sin might have been, grace always abounds more mm. than that because that's the power and love and beauty of of how God relates to his kids, you know. Amen. I think of the uh, another picture that comes into my mind is the prodigal son, right? And oh, what did it look right. like? What did, what was what did grace abounding look like? When he came home, it was the father saying, I'm not even going to let you get your full confession out. We're going to throw a party. We're going to kill the fattened calf. We're going to have a good time. Oh, you know? yes. That is great. I love that story. So I've always known of God and I've always heard of his love. I know he forgives me, but today I want to pursue God. He pursues me. He wants me in his presence. And I'm learning that true joy comes from pursuing God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I love when he says, he pursues me and I want to pursue him. Yes. It it, kind of circles back to that idea of like, be holy because I'm holy. Mm, Right? There's a sense in which, and also the Bible says that what is the, why do we even love? Because God first loved us. So Mm. this idea of God is the one that sets the pace. He sets the example. And so what I love about what this guy is learning in this season is he's saying, I'm recognizing, I'm realizing in a new way, just how much God pursues me in my brokenness and my abundance yes. of sin and all of that, he pursues me. And you know what? All he's wanting from me is saying, can, can you reflect that back? Like, cause can you reflect what the pursuit? Like we're, we're an oh, image bearer. I pursue. So when God is pursuing, yes. when he is loving, when he is sacrificing, he says, Hey, can you just be a, refle- a reflection of that? Like just follow my lead. In other words, he's not I'll saying, God you. is not saying, I want you to do something completely foreign and different oh, from what I'm yes. doing. He's like, no, just, just act like me. You know, <laughs> just do what I'm doing. I pursue you. You pursue me. Mm. I love you. You love me. I forgive you. You but worship me. Isn't that a great love story? And you think about that in terms of a marriage. Mm-hmm. If you pursue your wife and she pursues you, that's you know where great love happens. Absolutely, right? yeah. And so if you forgive, I forgive. If you bless, I bless. I mean, that whole thing, it, we can see that. We can know it in a spiritual dimension, but we can also see it yeah. with one another. So as you, as you think about this guy entering into a new season, what are some things that you think, like for anybody that's feeling like they're stuck yeah. or maybe they need kind of some... Uh, encouragement for kind of pressing into a new season, what would you want to say to them and uh, maybe some things that would be pulled out of this that could be really maybe helpful for somebody that's saying, man, I, I, I got to get unstuck. I need to. Well, and I think he, he, I like his two words, humility, right? How do you mm-hmm. fail if you're humble? Right. I mean, if you want to be the leader, if you want to know it all, if you want to be the expert, if you want to tell everybody, you want to fix everything. But if you enter with humility, number one, and then if you ever get confused, go find Abba. Mm -hmm. Pursue God. Right? Remind ourselves that we're spiritual beings and we have a soul and they battle each other. And that's okay. God's not overwhelmed by the battle. He doesn't get lost in our battle, but we always pursue him. And and then the system sort of straightens out again. Yeah. You know what I love about these kinds of conversations and just just sort of being able to unpack this one guy's process in terms of what he's learning in kind of this new season of life is that it reminds me again that the ways of God, the way that God has designed us is really pretty simple. Mm. Like God is not the one that's seeking to create chaos and confusion and conflict in our lives, right? When you're talking about, hey, let's boil it down to, can you enter with humility? 
and can you pursue God? It's pretty simple, right? It's right. not complicated. Yes, yes. And, I'll be the God, you be the humble yeah. one, right? And then follow me. Yeah. I'll tell you everything. And I love the verse where we're, we're not servants, but we're called friends of God. Mm. It's like, hey, just follow, okay? Just follow along, and I'll show you. And You just walk with me, and I'll tr- we'll be friendly. We'll interact, and right. I'll sort of coach you. Because doesn't every other man need another man and a role model and right somebody following God and then encouraging others to follow as we all try to you know pursue yeah. holiness godness righteousness which is the the battle of our life of our soul right do we value self mm-hmm. or do we walk in humility and say okay there is a god i'm not him but let's model after him. Yeah. Well, as uh, as we wrap up here, I want to uh, let you guys know that um, I'm actually about to release a new book that can actually help you on this specific journey of saying, hey, how do I get unstuck? How do I really pursue a deeper intimacy with God? And it's a book entitled Grace-Based Transformation. Uh, the three-stage journey to wholeness in Christ. Mm. And so um, keep your eyes open. In the next few weeks, we'll be releasing that book. But this is a great book for helping you to continue in that pursuit. How do you go deeper into your wholeness in Christ? And what does that look like even in discipleship for you to help somebody else also go deeper in their walk? But um, we are here to help you take your next best step. So if you're feeling like, hey, this resonated with me, I'm entering into a new season, or I'd like to be entering into a new season where I'm learning humility and pursuing God more, mm-hmm. reach out to us because we want to help you on that journey. Um, any closing comments, Stephen, that you have? No, or? just God bless you, and don't don't give up. If you fall down, get back up. If you get tired, rest, get back up. Stay in the fight, brother. Yeah. It's a fight. Stay in the fight. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on the Pure Sex Radio program. Take care. God bless.